For a time, it didn't look like anyone was going to make it out of Hadley's hope alive. No! Please, no! I'd been running the terraforming operation on Archeron for four years by that point, helping to build a better world. Or so they told me. Come on, come on, this way! Don't stop! Ah! Oh god, they're close. And getting closer, which is why we need to move. Oh, thank god, Russell. I thought for sure you were more of them. Genevieve Dion was a greenhouse supervisor who moonlighted as a teacher for the colonists' children. <sighs> they're not far behind us. Then let's go already! No! Not that way. The corridors are overrun with the damn things. Then where? I've got a plan. We're getting off this rock. There wasn't a ship on the Archeron that could reach faster than light speeds. But we did have one option. The Onager was designed for drilling ore and ferrying cargo to low orbit and back and not much else. But it could get off the surface, Move it. which would have to Move be enough. It. Knowing Gale was a surveyor and prospector, one of our so-called wildcatters, doing company jobs while also seeking profitable new mining opportunities with what little free time he had. Shift that stuff pronto! We don't know how long we'll be waiting for a pickup! You sure to stay and we'll make it? It's not like we have a choice, JR, now do we? So move! Oh god. Oh god, no! No! What are you waiting for?! Shoot the damn things already! On it! It burns! No! When we got to the hangar, things looked pretty bleak. No! They must have come from the East Corridor! We've got to get out of here before they finish with those poor bastards and notice us! No, there's no other way out! Everybody on board the Onager, we're leaving! Now! Come on, come on, move it! Kale, did you get any supplies loaded on board? Uh, what? Not everything we wanted, no, but we've got the transceiver and some emergency rations and... Then close up the cargo hatches. We can do this, we can do this, it'll work! not really rated on this equipment, Jean. Ramona, I promise I won't tell the company if you don't. Okay, Kale, are we good to go? We can't hit vacuum with those hatches open or we'll implode. <sighs> I'm in the umbilicus now. Looks like my men were able to get the hatches closed before- <sighs> Holy hell! Kale, are we good? If need be, we can release the clamps in the cargo container, but then you'd have to stay behind. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, Russell, we're good. We're good. The Acheron wasn't the only moon in orbit around Kalpamos, but getting to one of the other ones was going to be tricky. The Onager was designed to drill ore and carry it into low orbit for pickup. It wasn't designed to ferry three dozen people off planet. Well, how's it looking? The ride is pretty damn shaky. If you think the ride is bad, Wait until we have to land. We'll be coming in hot and hard, and there's barely enough fuel in the tanks for controlled descent. Everybody hang on! This is gonna hurt! God help me. But for a minute there, I thought the worst of it was behind us. I was wrong. Of course. That's so strange. The company's records said this was a lifeless rock, just like Acheron. It's not even supposed to have a breathable atmosphere, but we're breathing. And what's the story with all of this? He should be fine. Just a little bruised is all. Everybody okay? That landing left a few cuts and scrapes, and Kale was knocked out cold. But otherwise, mostly good. Could have been worse. When the cockpit smashed and we started losing pressure, I thought we might suffocate before we landed. A few cuts and scrapes we can deal with, assuming Kale comes too. He seems to be fine. Just unconscious. But I need a medkit to be sure. Should be one in the cargo hold with the rest of the supplies. I'll see what I can find. <sighs> Where... that... <sighs> Take it easy, Kale. We made it here in one piece. You caught a nasty bump on the head at some point, but all your parts are intact. Ah, I swear I'm putting in for hazard pay when we get home. Feels like I got kicked in the brain. I don't think you got a concussion, but I won't know for sure until they get the medkit out of the cargo hold. Hey, you guys, let's crack this thing open. 
The sooner we get that transceiver broadcasting a distress beacon, the sooner we'll be off this rock and on our way home. No, wait! Don't! Stop! Never. The things were horrible, relentless, but somehow beautiful in a way. Amazing. No, 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 no! Come on, Kale! But, but I didn't think, didn't know. Move! Split up, head for the high ground. Maybe we can lose him in those hills. Be standing around waiting to die. There were 38 people on board when Yana just sat down on the moon the company designated LV-223. At least six of them were dead inside of 10 minutes. Some were dragged away screaming. I had thought for a moment that we were out of the woods, but it turned out we just found ourselves in different woods and we brought the monsters with us. Couldn't even see this clearing from below. Wouldn't be too difficult to fortify. Do you ever stop making plans? Oh, give Russell a break, Kale. He's an engineer, remember? Planning is what they do. Glad to see you two made it out alive at least. Some of the others passed us on their way up the mountain. We'll go looking for them in the morning. We might as well get comfortable. Until we can get the transceiver off the onager, we're not going anywhere. In and out past those things? <laughs> Doesn't seem too likely. I don't. I couldn't. Take it easy, Kale. We'll make this work. I mean, it's not like we have a choice, do we? Looking back now, I'm surprised at how naive we all were. Thinking we only had a handful of monsters to worry about. But there was so much still hidden beneath the surface then. And as bad as things had been, they were going to get much, much worse. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I thought maybe it was just a trick of the light. Or a momentary hallucination brought home by hunger and exhaustion. The second time I had other things on my mind. Eventually though, I was able to start tracking its movements, calculating the intervals between appearances. And then, it was just a matter of time. Gotcha! It was clearly artificial, and at first I thought maybe I'd managed to discover some new form of alien technology. What the? Upon closer examination, though, it was clearly from much closer to home than that. This was old Wayland yutani equipment. I'd taken apart and retooled enough of the corporation's research and terraforming tech to be able to tell. Could it have been some remnant of an unmanned survey mission? Maybe from when our company was first scouting this system. Whoa! Prometheus, we're now mapping. So not only were we not the first humans to set foot on LV-223, we weren't even the first company employees. Just one of many answers that served only to raise more questions. The rest of the survivors didn't know anything about what I'd found yet, of course. They had other matters to occupy their attention. And I'm telling you there's no other way. We've got to hit those alien freaks hard, once and for all. This isn't some kind of game, Kale. We're barely managing to hold things together as it is. We can't be going on some raiding party. We need to entrench here where we're safe. Build up defenses. Get some infrastructure into place. Because going after those alien freaks would just be suicide. Genevieve Dion had been a teacher back on Acheron, among other things. She was one of the leading voices in our makeshift camp. No, it's suicide to just sit here and wait for them to come kill us. Nolan Kale had been a wildcatter until a short while before, more concerned with prospecting for a profitable strike than fighting. But things change. My men loaded food and supplies on the Onager before we lifted off. To say nothing of the emergency beacon we could use to call for help, and all of that is just sitting there down in the valley. With just a few of those things standing in our way. So again, I say that we go down there, kill them all, get our supplies, and be done with it. 
Heck, with the beacon, we could be off this rock in no time. The argument had been going on almost since we landed, and it didn't look to be over anytime soon. We had managed to find edible flora and fauna in our short time on the moon, but we also found this weird, oily black sludge. The stuff seemed to twist and mutate everything it touched. If we steered clear of it though, we knew we'd be able to keep from starving to death. But just barely. Ew. I swear these little monkey things taste even worse than they smell. Well, have you seen some of the fish we've pulled out of this lake? The ones on the other side of the lake aren't so bad. But on this side, they're just... just... strange. Like those monsters we brought with us aren't bad enough. I swear, Russell, if I ever find out who... We'd only encountered the alien freaks a few times since arriving on the moon, but it was already clear that when we did, the only thing to do was to... Run! Run, Carl! Ah! We'd lost almost a third of our number since arriving. At the rate we were going, none of us was going to be in it for the long haul. Damn, Carl! It was just a matter of time. Between the hunger and the uncertainty and the constant threat of alien attack. Tensions in the camp ran high. Just proves what I've been saying all along. Stronger defenses! We need to reinforce the- I had long since stopped joining in the debate. I had more important matters to consider. I'd managed to access the probe's internal memory and to rig it to project what it had recorded. Whoever was on this moon before us they'd found something pretty interesting, but they hadn't been around for long, and once they were gone, the probe kept right on scanning and recording, and what happened then was even more interesting. I finally decided it was time to tell the others. This thing has only been scanning for less than 90 years, but the ecosystem here has gone through millions of years worth of evolution in that time. The old scans were right. This was a dry, lifeless rock. But after just over 80 years, it's now teeming with life. That means terraforming. On a scale that humanity has only dreamed of. The others weren't exactly a receptive audience. To say the least. They were more interested in survival than scientific breakthrough. Not that it mattered much to me. Just think what else that kind of technology could do. In time. We managed to get a little better at the survival end of things anyway. As we got to know the terrain a little better, we also learned how best to escape or evade the aliens in the first place. If we could stay out of their way, then by and large we would be okay, which came as no comfort to all of those who had already been killed or dragged away, of course. Don't get lost. Or eaten. I won't. I just want to scout the terrain a bit. I didn't tell the others what I was looking for. After what happened back on Acheron, they'd think I was crazy. But I knew we were dealing with something different. I didn't know the half of it. Oh my god. I found what I can only assume was a part of the terraforming array. What is that stuff? And what I took to be the bridge? Oh wow. Thankfully. There were none of the alien eggs that the Jordans found in the downed ship back on Acheron, but what I did find... It could only be a hypersleep chamber. What? Oh, and it was still operational. After everything that followed the discovery of that alien ship back on Acheron, I knew that Kale and the others would want nothing to do with another one on this rock. So I hid what I could scavenge in a cave. High up on the hillside overlooking the valley, I brought Rover along too. Rover's the company probe that I captured. I still have to keep it on a leash. But after some slight modifications to its recording protocols, I've started using it to keep this journal. I'm onto something big here. I just know it. I need to keep a record of all of my findings. Okay, that'll do for now, Rover. I'm ready to get the hell off this rock. You said it, boss. No. No, it's not so bad, you guys. If you can avoid getting eaten, of course. Could be worse. 
could be stuck down in a mine shaft all day instead of out in the sunshine fishing. Ask me, I say. What was... Look! Move! <laughs> the Louise! <laughs> go, 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 go! Guys, are you okay? Where's Louise? One of those things grabbed him, took him, and then he was just, just gone. We need to get to work on those barricades now. I want everyone on the camp to drop what they're doing and what? No way, Dion. We need to go after those bastards before it's too late. Take the fight to them and end it. The same argument back and forth over and over all the while remaining oblivious to the wonders unfolding all around them. What made this place the way it is? Because it can't just be the terraforming array that I found. Near as I can tell, it was designed to produce a breathable atmosphere and inject some genetic material into the mix and that's all. So what happened here? What was responsible for all of this genetic diversity? For all of this growth? And what happens next? You guys think we could catch one of those flying things? <laughs> They'd have to taste better than those weird monkey creatures. Sister, I'm seriously considering becoming a vegetarian. Those, those things are nasty. Hey, check it out. Ever notice how everything that grows around this black goo stuff grows, well, weird? Define weird? This whole place is <laughs> What? What was that? Run! No, no, no! Help! Somebody help! Is that Ramona? What's wrong with her? Where are Myers and... Kale? Typical! Fascinating. It's like Louise merged with one of the alien creatures. But how? <laughs> Louise, buddy, I am so sorry. I just I didn't. I couldn't. Don't blame yourself, Kale. It wasn't your fault. You did what you had to. No, don't you see? It is my fault. All of it. What? Do you mean all of it? I knew those alien things got into the cargo hold of the Onager when we took off from Hadley's Hope. I saw them get in. But if I had said anything, you guys would have uncoupled the cargo containers and I would have been left back there too. I couldn't. I just couldn't take it. I was so, so afraid. I just wanted off. I figured that we could just leave that one hold sealed up and it wouldn't be a problem. But then it was open when we landed and everything went wrong. Please, you've got to believe me. I never meant for anyone to get hurt. Hurt? You bastard! People are dying and you let it happen! I'll kill you! Dion, come on, ease up. We could have been safe here. We could have been rescued by now. Instead, we're practically starving! Forced to eat anything we can find while those aliens are picking us off one by one! And you just sit there and watch! I know, I know! And it's been killing me! But I've got a plan! There's more than enough supplies on the Onager and a transmitter to call for evac. And there can't be that many of those aliens on board. I say that we tool up, storm the place, and kill those alien bastards once and for all. Then we get off this rock. You're just gonna get yourself killed, Kale. You and anyone foolish enough to go along with such an idiotic plan. Look, count me in. Dion was right. It's not much of a plan. As if this moon wasn't trying hard enough to kill us already. But still, I have to admit, I've kind of come to like the place. I still have so many questions about how this spot came to be the way it is. I tell you, Rover, it's like 
Every answer I find only raises more questions. This jungle shouldn't be possible, and yet it's here. The terraforming array I found in the alien ship would take centuries to create a biosphere this diverse, but it only took decades. Who knows what that alien ship is capable of doing? Was there some kind of time travel involved? Is that even possible? And there's no way the array could make the kind of changes I've charted to the landscape. This mountain just keeps getting bigger. How is that happening? You know, Rover, maybe I should have named you Rhetoric instead, seeing that I'm always asking questions I don't expect you to answer. As in rhetorical questions. Have I explained those to you before? Yeah, well, I thought it was funny. But what if... Just open the damn hatch! Oh no. Go, go, go! Like we planned! Ah! You hold them off! I'll get the transmitter! Got it! Eat this! Ah! Yo! The transmitter! Ah! Ah! For lack of a better term, I called it black goo. It's unclear whether the black goo is naturally occurring or some kind of advanced technology. But what is clear are the effects it has on living organisms. Small amounts produced significant changes, and large amounts, it's like things change entirely. It clearly affects an organism's genetic makeup, but it isn't simply a mutagen. It's more like an, an accelerant. I've made extensive study of its effects on plant life, and I've seen what it can do to the monkeys and other indigenous animal forms, but I can't help but wonder what would happen to a human who was exposed to more than a trace amount. I told Kale he was going to get himself killed. Huh. Shouldn't be any surprise if he actually did. But we're safe. The aliens haven't found our camp yet. Thank God. Maybe they never will. Go to bed, everyone. There's more than enough work to keep us busy tomorrow. And we all could use a good night's sleep. Dion. Sorry. Huh? What's that? Sorry. Who's there? Kale? Sorry. Kale? Get away from me! Sorry! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Sorry! Can you hear them, Rover? Oh god, I can. Well, I guess we know what became of Kale and the others now. They don't know where this cave is though, do they? I never told them where it was. Did you? You'd tell me if you had, wouldn't you? I think I figured out where they came from, Rover. I found a wreckage of another ship from Earth. The wreck must have been bad, but I found some usable salvage. Maybe I can patch up some kind of pressurized suit and go exploring the surface outside the jungle, see what the rest of this moon looks like. That black goo acted as some kind of accelerant, I'm sure of it. That would account for the accelerated evolution. But was it originally an aspect of the terraforming array? Or introduced later? A closer look at the unchanged surface might help me understand. And it would be kind of fun to go camping, don't you think? Rover, fine, don't say anything. You're just still pouting that I keep you leashed up. I thought maybe you'd have something useful to contribute to the conversation. Getting harder and harder to find fruit that hasn't been tainted by the black goo. Eventually I might have to... Hey, what's this? It's Standish's diary. She must have dropped it when she was running from the aliens. It'd be nice to have something I could write in. Maybe I can rig up a kind of stylus from a tree branch and use the blank pages. Might be nice to read what Standish wrote first though. Almost like having someone besides Rover to talk to and... K K 
tail? But how? No, 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 no! Come on, come on, come on! Not gonna make it. Kale. What? How could Kale still be alive? And what happened to him? He must have been exposed to the accelerant like Louise was. But the effect is clearly different. Louise somehow fused with one of the aliens, but Kale has turned into something like them. Not that they seem to get along very well, though. But why didn't the aliens come after me, too? They got to the foot of this mountain, but chased Kale. They could have caught me easily. Why haven't they found this place? Why am I safe here? I mean, I know that the mountain has been growing somehow. Could the mountain be protecting me? Rover, do you think it likes me? After finding the crashed ship, I returned to one that I found intact a few months ago. The only thing I can figure is that Kale must have been exposed to that black goo while he was in contact with one of those alien creatures. It mutated him, but maybe borrowed a little genetic material from one of the aliens. Their equivalent of DNA, perhaps. Maybe that's what the accelerant was designed to do. Force mutations speed up evolution. Is the black goo some kind of technology? Either way, it seems to have made Kale more fit to survive here than he was before. Better suited to live in this environment. These guys probably know all about that black goo. I could just ask them if I could ever manage to wake one of them up. <laughs> you guys forgot to let the front desk know you needed a wake-up call. If you just, just wake up, damn you! You've slept long enough. <sighs> It'd be nice to have someone new to talk with, you know? Oh, don't take it personally, Rover. You're still my favorite. This black goo just can't be naturally occurring. It affects plants, animals, humans, anything organic. Resequences their genes somehow. If it is some kind of technology, what was its intended use? Like with kale. In some cases, it seems to improve an organism's ability to survive. It doesn't just accelerate evolution, it can accelerate healing, at least in some cases. If I could work out all of the variables, it might even be possible to use it medicinally without the mutations, to treat genetic disorders, cancers, whatever. Well, no, Rover, you couldn't just inject it straight into somebody, they'd end up mutated like kale. You'd have to filter it somehow through something with a similar morphology, like a construct maybe, or an android. There's still so much we don't know about this place. Who were the aliens in the ship? Where did they come from? Ah, finding it harder and harder to focus my thoughts, like my wiring's been changed. I haven't come into direct contact with the black goo, but trace amounts perhaps. Heck, I might even have breathed in enough of it in particulate form to have an effect. But I will find the answer somehow. I have to. I just need enough time. I know I can figure it out. I know I can. Uh, oh, what was... Ah, uh, Rover, help. The headaches are getting worse and worse all the time. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. You were designed to scan the environment, Rover. A little tweaking and you can scan me. Oh god. What is that? A tumor? What did you say, Rover? You're picking up some kind of signal. It's human in origin, but coming from beneath this mountain. What the heck is down there? Did the mountain eat somebody? Will it eat me? See, Genevieve, you win. Since you're not around to tend to the graveyard, I'm doing it for you. You wouldn't believe the things I've discovered about this place. It really is amazing. I think that with enough time, I could unlock the secrets of- Ah! No! Ugh. Don't help me, Rover. I'm okay, I just- Rover? Damn fool. I forgot that I left Rover tied up back in the cave. 
I'd forget my head if it wasn't attached. <laughs> Kale, is there anything left of you in there? Anything of the man I knew? Ooh. Ooh. Ah, Kale, don't make me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kale. You deserve better. We all did. Rest in peace. Huh? No, 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 too far from home. The mountain can't protect me out here. Please, 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 not like this. Not like this. That black goo acted as some kind of accelerant. I'm sure of it. Gonna make it, gonna make it. In some cases, it seems to improve an organism's ability to survive. Ooh. It doesn't just accelerate evolution. It accelerates healing. Oh no. You couldn't just inject it straight into somebody. They'd end up mutated like Kale. Nova? Mountain? Anybody? Oh, it's you. Would it change me enough to survive? Like Kale? Would I even remember if it did? <laughs>